Well, good morning, Lakeshore, and welcome to Church Online. We're so glad to have you spending a party week with us, especially if this is your first time here. Now, in just a few moments, we're going to have some announcements slide to go on the screen, and right after those are done, uh, we're going to go into worship with our worship team. They're going to kick things off for us this morning. And after the second song of worship, we do have a kids' corner. So this is just for the kids, where they can go ahead and have a quick lesson with Pastor Kevin. Then after that, we'll go back and take a couple more songs of worship, and then into the message with Pastor Troy. And maybe at the end, I might throw in some extra announcements. We'll see what happens. Anyway, make sure you go ahead, like this feed, go ahead and share it so that more people can see the service and more people can hear the message of Jesus. Once again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We hope that you were blessed by the service. One, two, three, four. Good morning, Lakeshore. Welcome to church this Sunday morning. Let's worship the Lord in his house. Amen. He is good. Because you are good 
But you are good to me, oh yes, and I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good, you are sinning. good Lord
Hey kids, it's Pastor Kevin. Wow, I had to run really fast to get from the stage all the way back home here to my basement where I'm doing today's Kids Corner. So I wanna talk a little bit this morning about how do I create space where I can be still and hear God's voice. Psalm 4610 says, be still and know that I am God. And as I was thinking about this, it actually reminded me of when I was a kid. I had a blanket that I really loved. It was this blanket right here. My grandmother made me this blanket when I was a little baby. And something that I would do for fun to just kind of get away into my own little world was in my basement, I had a spot, a table, kind of like this. But what I would do is I would put some boxes together in a group like this, and then I would take my special blanket, I would do this, boom, instant secret hideaway. And I spent a ton of time in this little fort with this exact blanket over my head. I had a little black and white TV of my parents. I sometimes watch a TV show in here. I had a few of my favorite little toys and sometimes I'd write little notes to my friends or talk on my walkie talkies uh, to my neighbors next door. And uh, I had a radio and every once in a while I'd listen to the Saskatoon Blades hockey game, the play-by-play -play from Roger Millions. And uh, it was just this little space where I kind of got away by myself and I was able to focus on things that I knew were really important to me. Now kids, when it comes to hearing God's voice, you don't have to be in a quiet away space by a lake or in your hidden fort or in a field with birds chirping and singing. Sometimes you can hear God's voice best when you're just doing something that you really love. You know, when I was a kid, something I loved to do was play the drums. And check it out, that's me playing the drums when I was about 10 years old. Here's me playing the same drum set some 35 years later when I'm 45 years old. You see, when I'm playing the drums and I'm worshiping God with my instrument, it just takes me to that place where I can just worship God and have my attention set fully on Him, and I hear and know His voice in those moments so strongly. And here's my point today, kids. Whether you're in a quiet place, like a secret hideaway, or whether you're playing an instrument that you love, or a sport that you enjoy, um, or just something else around your home that you love doing, but it makes you feel closer to the Lord, spend time doing that thing. Um, Pastor Troy is gonna be talking later in his message about something called solitude. And solitude is just finding a way to create space where you can be still and really know that He is God. So find that time or space or place where you can just do that. Set your focus on the Lord, hear his voice, and draw near to him. Have a great day, kids. I'm so glad you joined me for Kids Corner today. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy.
worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show.
senses my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all.
Okay, it's sermon time again. I was uh, looking through the building here at the church trying to find a quiet place where I could record my sermon without any interruptions. Let's get right to it. Pastor yes. Troy, Pastor Troy. Yes, Michelle. I really need you to sign these documents. <sighs> okay, just a second. I'll be right back. Stay there. Okay, all right, let's get to it. Where was I? Oh, right. We're ready for the sermon. Listen, folks, uh, we have been talking all through the last few weeks in our online services. We've been talking about Christian disciplines, the things we need to do regularly to exercise our spiritual muscles and be the people God's called us to be. This is so important, especially with what we see happening in our world today. Uh, not just COVID, but now we have this significant issue pushed right to the to the front. That's the issue of racism. Everyone has seen what's been happening in the States in the last few days. And there's really been a call go out in Canada about uh, identifying and dealing with racism right here in our own country. And this is so important for us as believers. We are called to be people who love like Jesus loves and there's no place for racism in the church. So we're going to address this topic again, but I want to start by saying if we can rise up to be the people God's called us to be, it will mean speaking into our society, speaking to the community around us about issues like racism, issues like poverty, issues like people feeling marginalized or left out. Jesus never did that. Jesus loved people, he cared for people, and if we're going to be Jesus followers, we need to know what it is to share the love of Jesus with everyone without exception. So uh, we want to get started into today's sermon, and uh, our topic today is the topic of solitude. Over the past few weeks, we talked about reading your Bible, praying every day, praise and worship, uh, our thought life, our meditation on the things of God. Uh, last week, we talked about heeding the voice of the Spirit. And today's uh, reading, we're, uh, I want to share a text with you from Mark chapter 1. So Mark chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, it says, At once the Spirit sent Jesus out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. So Jesus in the wilderness. Let's skip down to uh, also in Mark chapter 1 verses 35 to 38. It says very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. We have these two stories from the Gospel of Mark where Jesus uh, goes away to a quiet place to pray. And this is a great perspective on our topic of solitude, quiet time time with God. I want to start with uh, this little introduction I prepared for you today, a little something different using video and photos. What is solitude? Solitude is the state or situation of being alone, all by ourselves. It is seclusion or isolation. Solitude is being quiet, listening for the voice of God. It's taking times of quietness, being completely alone. Life gets so busy and the world moves so fast, but solitude is shutting out the world and stepping back from the busyness of life. We shop till we drop. We fight off the sharks, literal or figurative. Sometimes we make plans, but things don't go as we'd planned. Sometimes life sends us for a tumble. We run out of gas. We feel out of tune and it's time to slow down. How far do you have to go to find solitude? You don't need to isolate on a deserted island somewhere. Finding God can be easier than you think. It can happen right there in the corner of your home. Solitude can be times of study, times of prayer, times of deep thought. 
These times of prayer, rest, and refuel can get us through the storms of life, and we can learn to rest in God. Solitude. I want to share with you today four points that all come out of these verses we read a moment ago from Mark chapter 1. Four things about solitude that I think are important for you and me. Number one, we read in Mark chapter 1 verse 12, it says, At once the Spirit sent Jesus out into the wilderness. The Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. So, so my first point today, solitude is part of God's plan. God wants you to have downtime. He wants you to have Sabbath. He wants you to have moments of quiet silence. Someone once said this, solitude frees the mind up from all the distractions of everyday life and allows it to focus more fully on one thing. One thing. Are you missing out on focus in your life? Maybe you've been running, 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 and it's time for some solitude. Think about it. Uh, here's some words from Pastor Kevin about solitude. Hey, well, my name is Kevin McKee, and uh, I've been a pastor for about 15 years and a follower of Jesus all my life. Uh, when I think about my life journey, uh, solitude has been a key ingredient when I've accessed it. Um, you know, those times when I've taken time to be still and quiet, but also away, there's something about the solitary and the being away that creates space to be able to actually listen and hear the voice of God, not just me be a talking head. Uh, when I carve out those spaces, it's been so rewarding, and there's such a richness and a depth that's come to my walk with the Lord. The challenge, of course, is you know those usual things you might think of, the busyness, uh, the, the, the to-do lists, and uh, all those kinds of things which can interrupt. When I think about the life of Christ, just in the Gospel of Luke, uh, there's seven times where Jesus, it says, he either withdrew or he went to a solitary place. Or, uh, And I think it's Luke chapter 21 or so, he was teaching all day and then at night he would go away and he would pray to, to recharge and to refuel. And I just think if Jesus needed to recharge and refuel and go and be alone, how much more do I need that solitude in my own life? Wow, great words from Pastor Kevin, and what a great backdrop for that video. We're so privileged to live on the edge of Lake Huron, and that's some, some real natural beauty there. Thanks, Pastor Kevin, for those, those words. It reminds us that if Jesus needed a rest, we also need a rest. Now, some of you are saying, hey, wait a minute. If Jesus was the Son of God, why did he need to rest? Well, see, Jesus was fully God when he walked this earth, but he was also fully human and his human will was always subject to the divine will. Jesus always did according to the will of his heavenly Father. And so uh, he sets the standard for us. I believe that because Jesus took time with his heavenly Father, we should too. We need that. We need those times uh, to, to get away into a wilderness time or into the garden. Remember, it, it just before Jesus was betrayed and taken to the cross, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he prayed, Not my will, but thy will be done. And if I'm going to say the same prayer, Lord, not my will, but what you want for my life, it has to include times of rest, times of solitude uh, for all of us. It's so easy sometimes to get out of tune or off track with God. We need to recalibrate, and we often are able to do that through solitude, times of quiet, times of rest with God. The second thing about solitude, again, back in Mark chapter 1, now reading verse 13, look what this verse says, and he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. Solitude is a place of personal victory. There's a victory to be won in our quiet times, our private times, our times with God. I mean, Jesus goes into the wilderness. He doesn't eat for 40 days. He is tempted. The devil comes against him with these temptations. And it's a reminder that, man, if we're going to make a commitment to be alone with God, we're going to face temptations too. We're going to have thoughts come into our head that are not the thoughts we would want to have. And, and Jesus got the victory over Satan in the wilderness and we can too. 
uh, Oswald Chambers, the writer of the great devotional, My Utmost for His Highest. Oswald said this, our battles are first won or lost in the secret places of our will, in God's presence, never in full view of the world. The Spirit of God seizes me and I am compelled to get alone with God and fight the battle before him. We fight the battle very often in private places. Have you ever found that to be true in your life? Here's a little video from my friend Mike Dupe and he shares an experience he had years ago where he was in his truck and he had an experience with God. My name is Mike Dupe. I've been serving the Lord for a number of years now, probably going on 30 years. And solitude is one of the things that I really hunger after in the Lord and I have to work at it. It uh, has to be carved out in my life. Many times Jesus withdrew to quiet times in prayer to communicate with his, his Heavenly Father. and I was driving down a particular road in Petrolia and I was seeking God on His direction in my life. And it was just, it was almost like a cold sweat. And uh, all of a sudden the Lord just, His presence just filled the cab of the truck. It was incredible. And He said to me, Mike, I'm not so concerned with what I want you to become, but I want you to get to know me. And it was like that was the answer that I needed to know, that he was there with me and he wanted my fellowship and he wanted me to get to know him. And uh, that changed my life from that point on. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Mike, for sharing that. Have you ever felt like in a private place, a personal place with God, significant changes happen in your life? Mike just said his life was never the same after that experience alone with God. Sometimes the battle is won in the quiet place. Sometimes we're shown direction. Sometimes our life changes in the place of prayer, in the place of solitude. Uh, it's the same with athletes. All of their their preparations and all of their making ready. It doesn't happen in the spotlights. It happens in, in a gym somewhere uh, where they're working out or they're out on a trail training and they're getting ready in private because the battle is won in private. Uh, I think it was Muhammad Ali. He once said that the fight is won or lost far away from the witnesses behind the lines, in the gym, and out there on the road. He says it's not out in front of the public where the battle is won. It's in the place of solitude. Lord, help me to learn what it is to prepare during times of solitude so my focus is sharp, my thoughts are clear, and my actions bring about victory. Verse 35, uh, it says Jesus got up, and he left the house and he went off to a private place. The third thing I want to say about solitude today, solitude is a priority. You put a priority on solitude. Is it important to you or it's not important to you? Uh, Jesus got up, the alarm clock hadn't gone off, the rooster hadn't crowed, uh, he, he left before anyone even noticed he was gone, he went and found a place of prayer, and this was a pattern. Jesus did this over and over again, finding the place of solitude, the place with his heavenly Father, no distractions. Whatever matters to you, you make time for it. Here's some words from a friend of mine, Yvonne Wigboldis, shared a little bit about her experience. Hi, my name is Yvonne Wigboldis. I've been a Christian probably since I was a teenager. I'm also a mom, I'm a nurse, uh, I'm a grandmother. A long time ago, I had a dear friend give me this mason jar. The sand basically represented all the little kind of meaningless jobs of life, like I had mentioned cleaning the floor and taking the garbage out and all those things that we do every day. The other things in life have meaning and purpose and priorities and 
And those times are times with God, our pearls. Our times are coffee times with my best friend and, and uh, taking the time to be with them when they need to hear from you and taking dinner to um, somebody who's got cancer and maybe shopping for a wig or things like that. Those things that really have meaning and purpose and value in the kingdom and our own time with God. That's what this represents and that can, that can those are our jewels. But what I found was that if I do all the meaningless things and get really busy with those things and, and, and don't make time for God and what's really important, I can't, I can't fit them in the jar. Um, but one thing God showed me was that if I put him first and I put the people that I love first, and the priorities in place, then what he says is all the other things will find a place and my life will be full and will have meaning. But if I did all the other things first, the little jobs and the meaning of those things first, and then tried to fit in all the precious things of God, how less full of God my life would be. We're all healthcare workers in our house. Um, I've written some of the COVID-19 material for Ontario, Manitoba, and pulled with demands uh, every day. And teaching, and Brian's working in EMS. My daughter works in the hospital, and we've taken in a nurse from the hospital. So during this time, for me, it became really important to put the things of God in first and not worry about my floor, not worry about all the cobwebs and, and things in my house. And I'm reminded of the verse, uh, actually God says it in several places, be still and know that I'm God. And basically for me is to sit on my hands, to stand back and watch the glory of the Lord. Wow, great words from Yvonne. Now there's a lady who hasn't lost her marbles. <laughs> A great words about fitting everything into our lives. Love it. And it's, it's such an encouragement to us all to, uh, to set aside time for the things that matter most. Get those things done. If your walk with God is important to you, find times of solitude, times of quiet through your day. And I believe, just as Yvonne shared with us, if we will put those priorities in place, we'll find there is time enough for the other things. And so uh, I really encourage you, if during COVID you haven't been able to find quiet times, times of solitude, try it today. Uh, try and etch out a time in just a few moments at a time of just total quiet. Don't turn on music and don't be uh, distracted by other things. Just I want some time of rest, some time of solitude with God. Hey, for some of us, it might mean just starting with a simple devotional moment and, and we build up from there. Here at the office, our, our office administrator, Michelle, she often posts a, uh, a devotional on the church Facebook page. Uh, I asked her about it and this is what she said. Hi, my name is Michelle. I've been here at the office at Lakeshore Community Church for a couple of years now. One of the things I love to do is to post devotionals on Facebook. When I read a devotional, it's my quiet time with God. It just kind of renews and spurs on um, some of his messages in his word. It renews my joy in, in the Lord. Um, and I hope when um, someone reads the devotional that I post on Facebook that it resonates with them um, and really impacts um, something that's going on in their life at that time. Wow, that was great. And, and you know, that brings me to my, my fourth and my final point today. Solitude instills purpose. There's a purpose that comes to us in times of solitude. Look at the scripture again, back in Mark chapter one and verse 37, it says, when they found Jesus, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Verse 38, Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. I love the scripture because the disciples, they find Jesus. He had wandered off to a place of prayer. Nobody knew where he went. 
Nobody was even awake when he got up and left. And they have found him and they said, hey, you're really popular. Everybody likes you here. Everybody wants to hear you speak. Everybody wants to see the miracles. And Jesus says, yeah, you know what? It's time for us to leave. Uh, I want to go somewhere else. He had come out of his time of solitude with a, with a sense of purpose. It's time to go. It's time to move. And I love throughout the scriptures, we see this where where godly people spend time alone and it gives them this sense of purpose. Noah, he spent years in isolation building this boat. No one else understood what he was doing. It didn't make sense to anyone else. Moses spent time in the wilderness. He spent time talking with God. Uh, the scripture says that even after they came out of Egypt, he would disappear into the tent of meeting with God. Just, just time of solitude with God, getting a sense of purpose. What does God want us to do? Where is God leading us next? I think about Elijah. He had his moment under the broom tree when he hears the still small voice of God, right? There's these moments in our life where uh, God speaks to us. I think of the shepherd boy, David. He's out on the hillsides and he's he's uh, strumming his electric guitar while he watches the sheep, or maybe it was a harp. I don't know for sure. But David, he spends this time alone. No one else is around and he, he develops a heart of praise and worship. And so many of the Psalms, beautiful expressions of praise, beautiful expressions of of uh, repentance or, or uh, the devotion to God that he wrote about, those came out of a life of solitude. All right, so I've got a little timer here. I've got it set to one minute. Let's see if we can have a little bit of solitude, a moment of silence. Are you ready with me? I've got the timer set. Here we go. It's at one minute and counting. Does it feel like it's going slow? Maybe we can speed it up. There it is. One, zero, and there it is, our time is up. All right, so one minute of silence. Was that hard to do? Was that difficult? Times of solitude are a stretch for some of us. It may be difficult to have total quiet and just be able to rest in that. But that's part of God's plan for us, that we would have moments of silence and solitude, quiet times with God. Look at this quote. I came across this. It's from the great uh, French mathematician and philosopher, Blaise Pascal. Uh, he once said this, I have discovered that all the unhappiness of men arises from one single fact in that they cannot stay quietly in their own chamber. We can't handle quiet. That's, that's what Mr. Pascal said is our chief problem. Because when we're quiet, when we are in rest mode, solitude, we are open to hearing from God and we need it. We need it, folks. We're living in a world today that needs the church of Jesus Christ to be hearing from God and speaking his truth in love and in grace, but speaking his truth. We're seeing so many things go on in our world around us, our own society here. We don't know what will happen with COVID. We don't know how things will roll out in weeks and months to come. But we need to be the church of Jesus Christ that is walking with God, that's in tune with him. And we've got something to share with our world. I came across a website where the author said, we have to unhook 
as we go into a quiet time, as we go to a place of prayer, as we go to a time with God, you have to unhook. And I thought, I've never heard that before. That's a really interesting phrase. And I thought about it, all the things that hook themselves onto us, things like our, our health concerns. Maybe you're, you're worried about your own health or someone near to you. Uh, maybe we have money concerns. You know, uh, how are we going to pay our bills? What, what's happening with our, with our mortgage, with our finances? Maybe your future is in doubt. Where will I be in six months or in a year, whatever, uh, my job, my career plan, things that are happening with, with uh, the people closest to you, the ones nearest and dearest to your heart. All of these things, they can, they can latch onto us, they can hook onto us, and we go to the place of prayer and we start to pray, but our mind keeps going to these other things. And so this author, he used the word unhook. It's time to unhook ourselves from these things that are, they're, they're, getting between us and God, you need to say, Lord, all of these things belong to you. I need to give these things over to you. And maybe that's the way you start your time of solitude. You start with prayer and you say, God, I'm giving you these things because I want to draw close to you. I want to experience you in this time and not be distracted by all of those things. Friends, I really believe God wants to do some exciting things in your life and mine. And he is going to do many of those things cultivated in the place of private and personal prayer and solitude. The times in life when I'm really dedicated about giving him that one-on-one -on -one time and just being really disciplined about putting aside all the people that are directly around me, as awesome as that is and as good as that is, to make sure that I make time for God and just sit with Holy Spirit. I know that that is the wellspring of life. I honestly believe that that is the wellspring of life and that I am more who I am called to be and better able to love on those around me when I'm connected to God, when I'm filled with Holy Spirit, when I hear His voice and I, I, I know what He's saying and I'm obedient to that. I ask you today, is there time in your day? Is there a few moments that like Jesus, you can get away and just focus on Him? I invite you to just uh, commit your way to Him. Lord, I wanna have times with you, personal times. Lord, we pray, we pray your blessing on each person listening today, that we would be people who set aside times for solitude, for quiet, for prayer, and for growing in you. And I believe in these times as we make them a priority and we win these personal battles in the private place, Lord, that we'll see great victories in our, in our church community, in our wider community here as we endeavor to share the love of Jesus with everyone around us. I commit this to you today, Lord, and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being with us today. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here. I find my rest And without you I fall apart You're the one That guides my heart well, Lord, I need you
was to you when temptation comes my way and when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay and when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my Before we go, church, we want to remind you that on June 14th, we are having another drive-in service. The last one was so amazing. It was so great being able to worship with all of you. We do want you to be able to come out again, so make sure you get yourselves ready for that. That is on June 14th at 4 p.m. again. So make sure you guys come by. We cannot wait to see you, and we hope that you were blessed by this service. Have a great week, Lakeshore.